Welcome to the Digital Patient, where we discuss the latest advancements in digital patient engagement and share stories from the front lines. I'm your host, Alan Sardana, and with me as always is Seema Sundi CEO, Dr. Joshua Liu. Today, we're joined by our very special guest, Ms. Helen Waters. Helen Waters is the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at Meditech, where she plays a pivotal role in shaping the company's strategic direction, operational priorities, and overall communication strategies. She is at the forefront of ongoing customer engagement, product direction, business partnerships, and executive oversight, including advancements of new structures, business models, and approaches to health IT. Ms. Waters was elected by your peers to be a member of the Chime Foundation Board in 2018. She is well known for her passionate advocacy of digital transformation in healthcare and is committed to addressing vital issues in healthcare such as ensuring the EHR has a positive impact on clinicians, patients, and communities. Throughout her tenure at Meditech, Ms. Waters has held various positions, including Vice President of Sales and Marketing, where she contributed to the company's success and growth in the Midwest region. She has also served as the Vice President of Client Services, overseeing the development and service of Meditech's client server, and as an operational leader in the Atlanta-based home care division. Ms. Waters, Helen, welcome to the show. It's wonderful to be with you. Thank you for having me. Well, it's absolutely amazing to have you on today. You've led such a bold and wonderful career. Uh, I mentioned it in the bio, but you are a super passionate advocate for digital transformation in healthcare. You were elected to Triumphs as their foundation board member, and you've really been committed to addressing vital issues in healthcare IT for the past few decades. I'm really curious to start the conversation. What initially drew you to health tech and what's kept you here for so long? Oh, well, that's a great question. Every every story has a beginning. So for me, I ended up in the latter half of my high school career, to be honest with you, and often during college working in a hospital, community-based hospital that was an employer to a lot of my friends and neighbors, and as well as some family members. I have family members that are nurses and therapists. I love the experience. I got to see firsthand how hospitals operated. I was engaging pretty regularly with busy nurses and doctors in many of the positions that I held during those years. I also got to see firsthand the joy of healing and the pain of suffering in terms of some of the exposure I had to patients and to disease and to families, working over at times holidays and seeing people being there and in a vulnerable state looking for help and looking for uh, the opportunity to be home with their families. And I, I was drawn to that. I uh, tend to be a more people-oriented uh, person to begin with, to be honest. And I also think that when I intersected that background, a bit of my DNA and then the potential power and impact of technology when I arrived toward Meditech, I just saw something that was that was very appealing. I gravitated toward it and I have honestly never looked back and I spent a lot of time just devouring the power and the potential of how to bring the human side of healthcare and delivery, the technology side of how to enable it and drive it to be hopefully better, stronger, and a more positive experience for both people that use the technology and people who are treated around it. And that's a bit of how I ended up here and why I, I sit here today a few decades later, I would say. Yeah, that's awesome. And just to, to set a bit of context, you've been with Meditech since the early days of Meditech CS, the, the client server side, and that was just following Meditech Magic. And right. the product has certainly evolved a lot since then. You've shared in the past, actually, how the latest product, Meditech Expands, was built entirely from the ground up and was almost like a rebirth that was only possible because of the culture that is Meditech and the team at Meditech. Mm -hmm. I'm really curious, you know, what's so special about the team at Meditech? Oh, so many things I would say, having worked here for so many years and knowing so many wonderful and committed and passionate individuals who work for their love of healthcare in the same way that, that I explained I do, who care deeply about the success of our customers and the outcomes that they could experience, who were wonderful human beings in the form of a culture that supported one another, right? So we were often in this, we are Meditech together. So mm -hmm. often cross divisional lines and role and responsibility and just rolled up our sleeves to do whatever we could to get a product to market that, that the market had a need for, to support a customer who might've been in any distress, to support a customer who was looking to optimize and use more of the capacity of the system. I've just known some tremendous people here. And I've often said that the customer base has really made us who we are, but in, indirectly it is also inspired and fueled the 
the team of Meditech to just rise to new heights and new levels that have been incredibly impressive. And in the various roles that I had, to be honest, I've seen that from many, many angles. So yeah. I've saw it from being a frontline field person who was out there listening to customers and bringing that feedback back. I saw it when I managed the the 5X division when I had the magic and client server customer base as we were transitioning toward Expanse. And I just saw all hands on deck in ways that literally inspired me to believe even more deeply how strong and great this culture and the people that work within it are. And that's been the case for the entire time I've been here. It remains the case today. Our workforce changes. We get introduced to new faces. And it's a wonderful experience to watch people embody and embed so much of that value system that we had established and that same passion for healthcare. And Helen, as you evangelize Expanse as you know, the next generation EHR for Meditech, how do you explain to folks the, the big differences between what you're doing with Expanse versus the previous versions of the product? Oh, I, I love explaining that because it's so vastly different than the previous versions. And you know, you probably also have heard me say many, many times we're companies steeped in pride and history in the sense that we've had this really wide reaching impact on healthcare to as many organizations as we could with the fundamental belief that every community and every person deserve the very best of technology that the industry could offer. So we had this wide impact. We saw a market on the move. We saw innovations coming of age that would talk about personal devices that were going to change the way expectations would be set and need to be met. So we went on this journey for Expanse and we said, and we often say this to customers, you must leave your historical knowledge of our platform at the doorway and give me your time and openness for the next few hours and I'll talk to you about the future. We had to do that internally as a company. We had to think about a new era. We had to boldly make the record far more complete than truthfully it was in the predecessor versions. We had to add new solutions that included a comprehensive ambulatory system. We needed to change the architecture, the technology, and the UI of this whole platform. We needed to think about no longer, as the industry was so accustomed to, hospital-based care or an episode of care and really transition into person-centered care and build off the great history we had, knowledge of healthcare and Shirley Hospital operations, and embolden and broaden our whole mindset to thinking differently about the continuum of care and ensuring that the record was comprehensive, it was sophisticated in nature, it was complete, and it was far, far easier to use and access for both patients, I should say, and for the clinicians that would use the tool set. So it was a, it was a big transition and an exciting one. I actually think it breathed a lot of new life into the art of what would be possible in this next era. You know, when you have 40 or 50 years of experience in an industry, which is great, and you should be proud of all of that success, you, you often have to also be humble enough to realize what's changing, how do you prepare for it, and how do you take a really big step back to think about the next decade and beyond and what you want to be in terms of your own company organization and what you really want and desire for an industry you've dedicated all the, all that time and energy to. So it's it's a great experience and we were really grateful to have gone through it. I wouldn't say it was always easy as we watched it unfold and got it developed, but we arrived at a really good place and we're proud of that. I love that. I, I saw a piece by uh, Beyond the Rankings uh, mm -hmm. on Meditech's Might and you were talking about exactly that, the pride of the past 40, 50 years, but then you know, how do we build for the future, the next 50 years? And it can't just be off the laurels of, of the past. So I really love that. And one of the things that you mentioned in that piece was around maintaining these principles as you build this new expanse version and the principles like value and integration, ease of use. How do we reimagine that with the new Meditech expanse experience? Historically, I think Meditech was always viewed as kind of this technology driven company or very technical driven company. And I think that's changed in the approach and how you redesigned Expands from the ground up. Can you tell us a little bit about what's changed uh, in that approach? Yeah, you're absolutely right that we were a technical driven company, right? We were absolutely outstanding in programming and delivering efficiency. And we were very focused on the cost effectiveness of everything that we did, knowing pre-meaningful use, the burdens that healthcare was under to deliver better technology more advanced capabilities, but not with an unlimited budget in the not-for-profit space in particular. But we also came to realize that we are a technology company, but also a healthcare technology company. So we inserted the word healthcare in front of that and realized that 
we weren't just uh, automating departments any longer and automating operations and workflows of departments. We were impacting the care and the process of, of medical care being delivered, right, for nurses and physicians over time. So we began to realize through, again, a, a degree of humbleness that we needed to understand where the market was, but where it was headed. We needed to engage the intended users of these new solutions, which would be now placing orders, documenting progress notes, taking care of patients and delivering meds, and then bound by what was coming down the pike, which was an extensive regulatory uh, set of rules and regulations. And we need to listen deeply to the needs of those users. And we need to take a big step back to think about what it would be like to be using these systems every day. And could we deliver an experience that would have someone see our product and think, I can picture how this will add value to my day. And obviously, as you know, as well as we know, as much as the industry is striving to do that, we're not in utopia just yet. Like we've all been on this journey of learning, but I would say that we took a step back, we assessed our strengths, we decided that we knew where there were some weaknesses in the process, and we decided to engage those areas with actual physicians and nurses and pharmacists and care delivery team members who could help us design the best software. So we would code it as well as we always had, and we would continue to have that strength of technical prowess, but we would also take the big step forward on the importance of the healthcare user and their intended use, and how do we make that as best and most efficient as we could. Yeah. So it was, a, it was a big transition. It was a good transition, and it was something I think at the end of the day produced a very strong and robust and intuitive platform that is being acknowledged in the industry as such. But the work yeah. is never done. <laughs> I, I, absolutely. It's certainly, I think it, it's, it's great to hear that there's a, an approach of continuous improvement. Work's never done. And, you know, we've seen expense kind of grow across many, many markets. So, you know, Al and I are, are you know, right now in, in Canada. And, and so MedTech has done very well in Canada over the years. I think last I checked, you, you still have north of 50% of the, you know, the hospital market share here. So something's really um, going well here. I'm curious, what do you attribute that success in, in Canada to? Like, what do you think you're doing particularly well or differently than some of the other players in the space? Well, I think the first point of note probably is we've been there for a long time. You know, when we establish relationships with customers, a country, a market, you know, that's not just a business transaction for us. That That's an extension of us feeling a part of the challenges of the Canadian healthcare system, where we could add value, what the unique needs are, which are, are different at times than those in the U.S. Similar, but different in terms of prioritization. We see opportunity for Canada to continue to advance in their utilization of our system. I began to work in Canada responsible for customer service and then eventually development and deployment in the 2010 era. And I was struck by how much software was there, but really not much was being utilized. And so we, we needed to take a really strong look at our approach to engaging customers, to explaining to them that the partnership should mean we're taking the best advantage of the tools that we can. Canada is different from a funding perspective, so we had to be creative around all of that. But the market began to move at some point. And then Expanse was introduced, as you know, around the 2016-17 general release era. And I think there was a lot of acknowledgement as well as movement in Canada as to the benefits of a modernized record and the integration that could exist there. But I think we've always felt a great kinship with Canada, and we have succeeded there by being together patient on where the market was and what we had to do, and to be together a little nudgy to each other about what, what we could envision the art of possible could be and get moving toward it. And I also think that we have been creative. You know, we just introduced the e-prescribing capacity for Canada, which I think will be the first widespread deployment of electronic prescribing for the hospital market in Canada. So we, we put our heads down with our customers and we talk about what their needs are and we share with them what we're doing in other parts of the world and, and we partner, which I think for us is, is meaningful and important given this long history we've had together in Canada. It's an incredibly important market space for us and we love the direction that the country is taking relative to more integration across the care delivery environments and certainly platforms like Seamless MD do a great job enabling more of that. So we are pleased with the movement in the market around many innovators like yourselves. And we're proud long-term presence in Canada and tend to continue to work to retain our customers and grow our footprint there, which we've been successful in doing. Well, I had to commend you, Ellen, and your team. I would say like, you know, our team has to go to a lot of the same, you know, 
healthcare IT and digital health events across the country and, and the Meditech team in particular is boots on the ground, invested in the community here in the ecosystem, organizing, you know, events and all that. So kudos to your team on not just, you know, operating in this market, but actually investing in the relationships and the success here. So thank you for, for pushing digital health here forward. So, so important. I'm glad you see that because it's it is very evident, and they are fierce advocates. Uh, the Canadian team on on what Canada needs, and I love that about them. So I'm happy to hear that. So Helen, you actually mentioned earlier in the conversation this idea of you know modernization of product. Now, especially there's kind of this expectation that consumers have with their healthcare and uh, knowing what their vitals are and and ownership of their own care. Yeah. And you've mentioned in the past how it's important for Meditech to really stay ahead of that curve. And so I'm curious, how are you leveraging partnerships with proven external solutions to greater impact or to greater the impact that Meditech has ultimately help patients and providers right at the point of care? Yeah, I think that's an excellent question. You know, um, one of the things that we've grown very comfortable with and have leaned into is the fact that we provide a very important and fundamental part of digital healthcare. And there's no question about that. And under the hood of that electronic health record is, you know, decades of years of experience and and gazillions of lines of code, but that the industry would continue its journey forward in terms of some of the innovations and tools that would sit around us. And again, Seamless MD being one and, and others that exist exist around us. And we've embraced the concept of Expanse being a very strong core platform, but one that will be open to the innovators who are of choice for our customers with a lot of the smart on fire API capacity that needs to be there. I think back to Apple and uh, the user experience, I, I think those were very aha moments for healthcare. You know, we were training people for years on our way of thinking and coding and clicking and swiping, uh, not swiping, I should say, digging for information. Yeah. And along comes Apple, originally, obviously, with the iPhone and then the iPad in 2010. And I think we really woke up to the fact that it was so easy to use and it was so unintimidating that eventuality would be, this is what people would come to expect, as they should, by the way, as they should. So a lot of our journey has been spent opening up envisioning for Expanse a more open platform and realizing that we would never at the end of the day with technology moving at such a fast pace be able to be all things to all people, not wanting to control the ecosystem in its entirety. Our philosophy is that our passion and love for healthcare runs deep and therefore we should want to see it live and to breathe and expand the way it needs to and not be in fear of that. So I think Expanse is a reflection of that. I think the movement towards a completely open uh, cloud-hosted, web-based architecture was a strong sign of that. We did that before anyone else in the market space did it. We did it in a very difficult way in that we really went in and rewrote the code itself. We didn't just put a layer on top of an older legacy system, which is the path that most companies did take. We're proud of that. We've learned a ton from that, and that really catapulted us into being a cloud-hosted as a service vendor, which has been also a big benefit for I think the marketplace is looking for better relief on operating cost models versus just capital. So we've driven a number of different innovations that were spawned out of those realizations. And a key one I would say um, in terms of partnerships is that we believe that the industry has seen and will continue to see a lot of positive innovation. There'll be a lot of hype too, so we're cognizant of all that, but really good innovation and augmentation of the EHR will thrive and survive in the future and that we should be helping our customers in that ecosystem become vibrant and alive. And that's what we've been doing with this platform for some time. So, you know, speaking of partnerships, you know, one of your your key partnerships in the recent past has been with Google Health and, and how you're transforming the clinician workflow, especially when, as you know, there's so much burnout and and staff shortages and people leaving healthcare. And so could you share more about that partnership and the work Meditech is doing to kind of maybe bring, you know, re almost like rehumanize healthcare in different ways? That's a great way to, to phrase it. I think we talked about the journey from meaningful use forward and how we were all using legacy platforms for a number of years to, to start a new care delivery process. And that wasn't easy. Then we moved to Expanse and our competition moved with us in terms of different versions of the software. But at the end of the day, across the globe, we have a rather frustrated and burned out physician community and, and now nursing community. We took a step back in 2021, the latter half of 21, really the summer, late summer, fall, 
some really interesting discussions with Google about some of their technology platform direction. And what excited us was the potential of continuing to find relief for some of the most challenging problems with the chart and the record, which is where is the information? <clears throat> How is it being stored? How easily can I find it? It's now well integrated, but depending on the source from within the record or from outside the record, it can be still for many across all EHR systems, too much hunting and packing to find out what you need. We saw a moment in time where we said, if we could embed a fast, efficient, best-in-class solution for search within the electronic health record, could we add value? And more importantly, we saw a tremendous opportunity to start the beginning of our learnings along with Google in terms of what eventually has now been opened up to the entire market of large learning models, right? Okay. So the, the search and summarization tool that we're building with Google is designed to find and identify information fast and then surface that information from the live system, from a legacy system, or from even a third party system that we have mapped into the database and be able to correlate and connect conditions in a very intelligent way because of the LLM that's in there. So we're using natural language processing. We're searching data that's discrete. We're searching data that's been scanned. We're searching data that's been handwritten. And we're bringing all that in an amalgamated way to the visual forefront for busy clinicians to see history, correlated conditions uh, based on procedures and disease, surfacing information that may have been related previously to misspellings. And it's really taking to another level how information is presented to enable clinicians to make decisions, not drive them, just enable them to, to look back, to look forward, and to see the entire picture of the patient, whether it was keyed in by a system, electronically exchanged through an interface, whether it was scanned in through documents, and there's still quite a bit of that going on, scanned in through an image from a PAC system, or was a handwritten note of some sort. So we're really excited about this. I think what's funny, we began the coding work in 2022. We actually delivered that code uh, this month to a customer, which we're really excited about. The physician response to this has been extraordinary. Um, in our typical fashion, we gave it a name that was rather muted, search and summarization. Someone said to me, you guys just quietly do because you're way ahead on trying to explore this large learning model with Google called BERT, which is the original version of, that's in there. They're now moving on, as are we, to others, which I'll speak to in a minute. And it gets covered, but sometimes in another state, someone else sees and it gets a big story. So we're really thrilled that we're ahead of the curve on what we consider to be AI and LLMs and we're fast moving in this direction, getting that code directly into the hands of a customer. That's so cool. I also just want to make a comment. I think Meditech's naming conventions are just so brilliant. Throughout this conversation, I'm, I'm piecing together exactly why it's called Expands. Like it's so, it's so awesome to me. Yeah, it was designed, you know, that was very purposeful. We, we were never known, which you may or may not know, uh, but Josh, I'm sure has figured out working with us as, you know, the slickest marketing company. But we really wanted the name to reflect something that was true and relatable. So it's uninterrupted space. And it's designed to cover a large span of time, which is a person's life and their healthcare. And so it did mean something to us. And, and this is another good example of trying to fulfill that mission because this problem of burnout is quite substantial and it has nothing to do with Expanse or previous versions of just Meditech. It, it's a global problem across many health systems and many regardless of the EHR for sure. Yeah. Can I ask, in terms of uh, rolling out this sort of, you know, new set of technologies with things like LLMs and generative AI is a pretty big undertaking, and, and you have such a large customer base, how do you think about how you roll that out in a way that's safe and, and effective and you can be confident? Like, like, I guess, do you typically start with just like two or three beta reference customers that you do deep R&D on for like a year or two before, and then you start rolling out to maybe a couple more, a dozen here or there, or... Is there a big bang at the end where everyone gets it at once? Like, how, how do you think about a rollout of that sort of breakthrough technology? So I do think, you know, the breakthrough part is clearly hit the industry based on OpenAI's release of chat GPT and doing that to a much more broader consumer world. So the industry's knowledge of AI went from here to here overnight. AI as a concept and learning models have been underway for some time and in fact are quite decently established in far less complex industries, you know, the insurance industries and financial industries, medical data is quite different. So I think you raise a really good point. Our work on the previous 
project I just explained with Google was very comfortable to us, right? We would allow their best in class search capability to just comb our record. We would build it, by the way, into the framework of the clinical physician or nurse using the system. So they wouldn't be leaving our system. It's actually in Meditech that they're doing that search and they believe they're in their search, although it's, we'll say, powered by Google. And then we take the intelligent information it can find on the patient from any of those data sources and we just surface it and we surface it really quickly. And that's far more comprehensive than what can happen today with many, many clicks going in and around trying to look at an image, trying to look at a past progress note. But the next iteration will be the generative AI space. So our version and vision for that is as robust. We believe that our mission is to deliver technology that will enable the healthcare organizations to deliver the safe and efficient and impactful care. But our approach with regard to AI will be thoughtful and it will be delivered and driven by an understanding that it should safely enhance the physician, the care team and the health system experience, and most importantly, the patient experience as well. So today in time, we have a number of different projects that are underway in our assessment now of generative AI and where we can take very redundant and repetitious tasks or points of friction for a clinician beyond what we're doing with the existing first Google project and make an impact quickly. So we're assessing, obviously, the advanced Google tools, which would be, you know, they have Bison and Palm and then MedPalm. And we're also benchmarking that against chat GPT. And we will expect to make some announcements in September to our customer base about some other fruitful learnings and tools that we can deliver around AI. To answer your question, absolutely take an approach that we work with customers directly to identify the use cases, which is happening right now. And we also work with a couple to ensure that we're confident in what we've done and, and how it's producing the results that we both think that it should. Uh, so we take a, a very deliberate approach to rolling it out. And once we're satisfied and sure of its uh, accuracy and capability, we would be thrilled to be offering this to the rest of our customer base. But it's an area that's in some ways been heavily hyped to the future. We share the belief that you want to be thoughtful and deliberate and you want to be certain that you can deliver the advanced capabilities that will actually enhance the experience for already busy clinicians and health systems and certainly even patients who are a bit overwhelmed at times. So we're excited about the future of AI and generative AI, and we feel like we're a little steeped in some experience based on our work with that original LLM from Google, and now we journey forward. Well, we're about to keep uh, an eye out for the announcements coming in September. It sounds super exciting, so really yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. So Helen, you actually gave a really compelling talk at the Chime Fall Forum last year on cultivating women to lean into healthcare IT leadership. Yeah. You've also personally been awarded one of the most powerful women in healthcare IT multiple times. Well, yeah. Meditech's executive team I saw is predominantly women. And I think that is so unique, right? Like, Thanks. so my question is, what advice do you have for leadership teams that find themselves either sorely lacking in perspective through the absence of women in their circles? And then mm -hmm. yeah, part two to that is, what advice do you have for women in health IT who are considering leadership? Yeah, so I think the answer to your first question would be, we were fortunate here to have a, a senior leadership team that really valued contribution. And I think did early on see the power and benefit of a, a neutral workforce with regard to gender. So they were more than open to where the talent lied and putting the right person in the right role, which obviously, you know, many of us have benefited from. I think women, bring a different perspective sometimes to topics. Uh, and it's not at all any indication that men don't bring as valuable a perspective. But I would encourage people that are working in organizations to look for the diversity that might bring new ideas and new thoughts and new ways of looking at, at challenges and new ways of seeing opportunities. Because I think women can add a lot to that in complement to their male counterparts in organizations. And that's proven to be pretty successful here at Meditech. We have a blend. We we're pretty male dominated to begin with in terms of the formation of this company. Women play a huge role in the workforce of our country and our nations, for sure. I just heard the other day that 75% of women uh, that were working pre-pandemic are now back working. Okay. And I think that adds a lot to the outcomes and to the way decisions can get made and, and to the success of organizations. So I would say be open to diversity and assess where you have potential strong leaders and begin to invest in them 
give them the freedom to participate, uh, give them the freedom to demonstrate their capacity, and uh, you, you'll probably be quite pleasantly surprised. With regard to women in healthcare, I explained earlier that this is just an amazing industry. There's one thing that, that makes it unique for each one of us, male or female, we consume healthcare, and people that we love do. And so I think that women would find it both exhilarating because of the pace of change and the investment that's being made now from a digital perspective in healthcare and in technology and healthcare. I think that there is a human aspect to this that forces us to be learning all the time. So we become learning organizations, learning beings about how we can improve and extend our original thoughts and experiences to broader and newer horizons. I would encourage particularly women who are curious, women who embrace change, women who want to be challenged to contemplate health and IT. Um, I think there's not a, as much diversity in that space from a technical perspective as probably could be. And again, I think in the same broad statement, you know, women have a lot to bring to discussion and to idea generation, to challenge and to, to potential opportunities. And I think it's a wonderful industry to be involved in, whether you're laying hands on patients, which is as critical, or you're creating technology that supports them, or you're working in a healthcare organization, running a department, or in a front line. It's just a very rewarding place to be because you're touching the lives of real people and real families, and you have an opportunity, no matter what level you're at, to make a difference. And I think making a difference in, in life is important, and this industry certainly provides you with that capability. Well, that. Helen, can I ask you, like, what's been Meditech's approach to deciding what customer feedback really is the most important as you build your product roadmap? So, for example, you mentioned earlier that AI has had some hype cycles, but I think most people believe generative AI and LMs have, have a real future in healthcare. But if you had a couple of years ago tried to join the hype cycle with blockchain and built some things with that, probably would not have been the best use of, of your product roadmap time. So. How do you think about deciding what feedback you're getting from the market on new technologies from customers really makes sense to, to incorporate into what you do next? Because I mean, even as big as you are, you, you probably have limited resources and bandwidth yourselves too. I, I think everyone has that challenge somewhere in their organizations. You know, we have a lot of opportunities and forums to engage with our customers that are formal, right? We have and operate uh, physician advisory committees and nursing advisory committees, and we operate CEO advisories, and then we have broader forums that we run ourselves here. We just did one on inf informatics recently in June, and we'll do a live one in September. We network a lot with the industry, as you know, in terms of where we show up. We do a lot of research, to be honest with you, uh, in terms of what's happening and what might be coming down the pike. I think over time, when you have a, the depth of experience that we have, coupled with the humility to realize we don't know everything, right? So we must be open and not just conventionally think the first thing that comes to our mind. We have a technical capacity that's very good as far as the staying power of technologies and being able to cut through a lot of the smoke pretty quickly. So I think it, it is done by virtue of being avid listeners to your customers, by the way, which we have an army of talented client support staff who talk to their customers every day, who want to communicate to us what they're asking for. We have a market moving at lightning speed, to be honest with you, and it's important and imperative that we discern what's important to that market, uh, how we compete effectively and picking the right balance. Um, and I also think that you get out in the field and you talk to people. You cannot run uh, organizations and think you have a policy if we're just sitting in offices. We must be out present to customers of all shapes and sizes. We must be active and avid listeners to the needs of the customers in the market space. And we have to be able to be agile and pivot. It's not an easy job, I'll tell you. And there always are trade-offs. But I think with the right thinking and the right ability to be confident in, in how we communicate what we decide to customers, it's something that can carry us quite successfully and has in a lot of ways. We also started a new process a year ago which we're excited about, called solution streams. And in those solution streams, we have representation at lower levels, by the way, which I like, from the manager to the director up, uh, talk about the constituency of customer requ requests, the constituency of market and product management level requests and industry research requests. And we blend those together so that, that those teams, along with the executive team, have a big voice in realizing that we're going to keep the right balance, we're going to make the right decisions, and we're going to be confident we, when we talk to customers or prospects about what we're doing and why we picked it. Um, 
So it's a bit of this and a bit of that, but it all seems to come together well. And we haven't missed any trends, in my opinion. We're usually in somewhere way ahead and somewhere right online. I think we're in a good place to have a decent pulse. We get some really smart people that care and want to keep pushing us along. You must be relevant for today's market and today's customer. And the customer changes today. And certainly the market continues to move today. And we've got to move with it. Well, I love that focus on being customer centric. And speaking of engaging the market, you know, you're one of the few healthcare leaders, especially in the digital health world, at a very large organization that actually engages online in in discourse on social media. So, you know, folks who don't know, like Helen, you're active on on Twitter, you're active on LinkedIn. That's not all that common among most um, healthcare um, technology leaders. So. Why are you investing at least some meaningful time in that? And, and, and what's the, the value of that for you and, and for the community? I, I think I invested time because I, I love the subject matter. So I'm an avid reader. I, I have perspective, sometimes an opinion. I'm moved by a lot of what I read and see sometimes, to be honest with you. I'm touched by the work that people are doing across this industry that sometimes has nothing to do with us, but it's important work. Um, I'm moved by the stories from our customers and other sites all around the country who just work tirelessly to be better and deliver better patient care. And I like it. I don't have as much time to do it as I'd like, right? So I do get a little help here and there. I'll, I will say this is something we should be promoting, but I do quite a bit of it on my own and I'm happy to do it because I usually think this is interesting and it'd be nice for other people to read it or think about what their thoughts are on it. So. It's the town square, they say, right? I don't know what Threads will call itself, but I think it's a good concept of just sharing and enlightening each other about the difference of topics and opinion. I I like to hear different views, so I tend to read a lot, and I, occasionally I definitely like to share a lot. I love it. Well, I, I'm not on Threads yet, so someone's going to have to tell me if that's, that's worth doing just yet. But <laughs> I think we're going to have to find it out because it's growing quite exponentially is what uh-huh. I hear. Now, hopefully it will keep growing and not just level out because of the newness, but it's it's done pretty well in these first couple of weeks. That's right. Great. Yeah. W- one more one more uh, social media account we have to manage. That's that's just great. <laughs> well, I, I mean, every that you know, you mentioned it earlier, but the the one thing I, I regret most is and I think you have a question somewhere for me on this, but just so many hours in the day. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that's challenging for our company, and I'll jokingly tell you that one very just good CIO said to me in a, in a situation where we're competing that Again, you guys just quietly do, and someone sneezes from Epic, and there's a news story about it. So being heard is hard in this right. industry, right? Breaking down uh, perception walls is is difficult and time consuming, and the noise out there for everyone to consume is just a lot too. So okay. I, it, time is of the essence at times, and another platform to manage probably is, is going to add challenge to that. Mm-hmm. But so be it. We're, I always say we, we, we must embrace what's coming in front of us because we're certainly not going to stop it, right? And that's the same with AI and other things. We just have to be thoughtful and think it through and keep moving ahead. Better to run to it than run away from it. That, that that's makes right. total sense. That's very true. Yeah, Great good advice. Point. Awesome. So, Helen, I think I already know the answer to one of these questions, but we're going to jump over to what we call the fast five lightning round. Five okay. questions to get to know you a little bit better. Question one that we have is, what is your favorite book or book you've gifted the most? Oh, I love the Randy Pausch book, The Last, uh, The Last, um, God, hold on a second, what is it called? I want to say, Randy Pausch was 2008 published. Oh, was, the lecture. It was the last now, lecture, sorry, that just oh, nice. out of my brain. One of my favorite books, I just, I loved reading it. I loved his story. I loved his, probably at the time, connection to healthcare and what was happening for him. And I loved the messages that he gave in it. And they've been written about many times since then. But for me, that was an awesome book and it really impacted my life and reminded me of what is important, which I do always try to remember. It's about people and experiences and living and and all the things on management principles that, that just matter to me. Valuing your people, giving authority, holding people accountable, being kind. So I, I thought that was a great book. Loved it. Thanks. Question two, who is a person either dead or alive you'd love to meet? I would have loved, there was so many, by the way, that I could put in there from I would say I love politics too. I love to study it and read it. I just find it interesting. It reminds me a little bit of industry in some form, just fighting for mind share, making arguments, sometimes being frustrated with the mistruths that are out there. I loved and loved and have read a lot about Franklin Roosevelt. I think this was a guy that faced unprecedented times and decision-making. 
He seemed, uh, he had health challenges, by the way. Yep. He seemed to be a content person, a reasonably kind. He seemed happy and confident in the way he described and delivered his decision. So I, I enjoy reading quite a bit about that period in history, but I also love lots of other people that I could mention that would be fun to sit down with at different degrees, but I put him up there. Question three, would you rather have super strength, super speed, or the ability to read people's minds? I said speed, just because I just find time is always of the essence, yeah. but reading minds would certainly be fun too, but <laughs> I don't think we really get that, so I'll, I'll take speed for now. <laughs> Question four, what is something in healthcare you believe that others might find insane? I think, you know, the manual processes that still exist, the inefficiencies that are still out there. I, I'm often on tours of hospitals and health systems and sometimes in different countries, and I'm just astounded at the amount of paper that still exists. I'm astounded at the way in which things can still be done just because that's the way they've always been done. So I think that's why I get excited about the technology, ours, and what will come around it that make people realize, gosh, this is the wrong way to be doing this at this point in time. I think the influx of new talent in healthcare is good too. You know, it was an industry that was very sedentary for a lot of years, same people, a DP mindset. We've got people from other industries now coming in and shaking things up and asking questions and they're good questions. So I would say just how manual it is, is, is shocking. We've all, we've all experienced it, by the way, when we're helping out parents. I think the generation coming up behind us is not going to tolerate it and going to have way high expectations as we do today. Um, so yeah, I think they'd be shocked at how manual and in some ways old it is. <laughs> yeah. Last question that we have, if you could travel back in time to any event or moment, what would it be and why? I would love to travel back in time to, honestly, this would be a more personal answer, I guess, to my ancestry. I think, you know, being aware and having an opportunity to meet people that we are absolutely bloodline from and see where there were similarities, what kind of adversity they went through as non-citizens of the United States, which has been a big benefit of, of me and my family, but were immigra immigrating here out of countries that they loved. I would I would really love to be back watching and talking and, and experiencing some of that to see what their lives were like and what they went through. No yeah. question. Yeah, that would be fascinating. Yeah. Really awesome. Well, thank you, Helen, so much for sharing your time with us today. You can find Helen on Twitter and possibly threads now, but uh, at least on Twitter at Helen yeah. Meditech. Yeah. And that's a wrap for this episode of The Digital Patient hosted by Seamless MD. You can follow us on Twitter at Seamless MD. We are also on threads at Seamless MD. And if you want, if you like the podcast, and you want to learn more, you can visit www.seamless.md. Helen, again, thank you so much. My pleasure. Really nice talking to both of you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you. Mm -hmm.